So, welcome to the lecture 14. That is a Burmic, uh, it is a same continuing as a Burmic compost production technology. So, so we'll this here we will discuss about the harvesting of uh, Burmic compost uh, after judging the maturity, then how we can harvest the Burmic compost and separate the earthworms from the Burmic compost and followed by the drying to uh, have a proper moisture content in the Burmic compost and finally, uh, packaging and storing. Um, for the uh, harvesting uh, and uh, earth and the earthworm separations, for the harvesting is generally done manually uh, by using a swivels and, a, and, and lo loaded on the hand trolley. Uh, the separation of earthworms uh, vermicompost is generally done manually or by mechanical process. So, now we have the harvesting also you can go for the um, mechanical processes. So, that the there are different type of uh, vermicompost beds. So, after the maturity, so it can be uh, uh, beds, uh, weevil beds also. So, this can be unloaded and after that it can move for the separations of the earthworms either the manual or mechan mechanical process then you go for the drying. So, whole process also now they are coming up the uh, automations in the vermi composting process. So, that uh, how uh, using the uh, high tech uh, and technological approach uh, we can monitor the, uh, the, uh, the quality parameters in the composting process and this uh, every uh, all the process can be automated as a mechanical means as a mechanical process. So, that there will be less interventions of the uh, human power or the manpower. Uh, you can say the, the manual process uh, by the separation of the earthworm. So, the heap method by this uh, vermicompost uh, after uh, harvest is heaped uh, is um, gathered heaped in a dome shape in a open space or on cement floors uh, under the bright sunlight at high, the height of around 2 to 3 feet. So, what happens if you make a heap them or the in a, in a open space or the, um, the, the, the over the sun under the sun. The worms move to a lower layer or the worms are light sensitive, thus uh, facilitating harvest of compost from the upper surface. This process is uh, repeated maybe 3 or 4 times and all the adult worms migrate to the base of the heap and can be separated, but this process is time consuming. As you uh, uh, put the vermi compost in a uh, under the sun and heap it as a domes as a dome as a dome shapes and as the, the earthworms moves to the bottom layers then we can take away the you can take out the upper layers of the vermi compost by step by step and finally the um, as the earthworm migrates to the, the bottom layers those earthworms can be separated by manually sieving operations uh, mechanical process for this earthworm separation. Uh, so, this earthworm separated by sieving using a wire net of 2 to uh, 3 millimeter size. In separation process, the earthworms remains above the net and the vermi compost falls, falls below the floors and these are collected. The sieving unit may vary in size and its operationals. The sieving frame, including the stand and net, can be placed either on the uh, simple platform or the spring load platform or run by motorized shaker. So, uh, so there are different type either you can for the manual sieving that are the, uh, the um, labors can do by size of the 2 to 3 millimeter sieve um, size or uh, mechanically uh, also will be showing in video as you seeing. So, how the sieving operation can be done by the mechanical vibration of the sieving machines where the earthworms is separated on uh, one location one points and the uh, burning compost uh, are collected in another points. And these are the harvesting uh, of uh, heap methods. So, as we uh, make a dome shapes of the heaps and uh, under the suns, so they with the lights the earthworms they migrate to the deeper layers. So, by making the heap we can collect the vermicompost by step by step from the upper layers and the bottom layers can be used for the manual sieving or uh, sieving process. And this is also drying we will discuss later what uh, you can make the you can put the vermicompost is the plastic sheets. The plastic sheets make a temp a maintain some temperatures and can be burning compost can be sprayed for drying or you can go for the sun drying usually for the air drying. So, this separation process uh, either you can have the sieving methods by sieve we can separate the earthworms or this is a mechanical shaker. So, you put the vermicompost compost here loaded here and by the motorized shakers 
by shaking we can collect the the vermicompost at one points and the earthworms at the other other point and this is the drying come uh, uh, and sieving machine uh, so here we have the uh, dryers where the here the hot air blower is there and the top there is a sieving machines this uh, vermicompost loaded on the top so this can be a, can be conveyor belt it attached to these systems and the vermicompost is loaded on the through the conveyor belt it comes to the top loadings so after that the the, uh, the shaker is there the mechanical vibrations so through this uh, shakers as a, as a, as a sieve, sieving machine and here the vermicompost falls down and this uh, the uh, earthworms they are collected in the, on the other ends while the vermicompost are collected at the at the bottom of this machines here there is a hot air blowers and the, we, we provide the hot airs so that the the at the same times the sieving separation from the earth, earthworms and also drying operation can be performed at at one go and finally the vermicompost is collected and that they send for the bagging and this is also another, another dryers so here the dry the sieving followed by the drying drying so here the hot air blow, blower gives the drying also the sieving machine is there where the earthworm is separated one points and the vermicompost dries and also collect, collected drying and packaging so for uh, uh, marketing uh, it is packed at a moisture content level ranging from 25 to 30 percent usually go for the uh, sun drying or maybe the solar drying is done so you do not go for less than 25 percent moisture content 25 to 30 percent moisture content should be ma maintained for the final, com final compost if you decrease the moisture content with vermicompost the live materials so many microbes are present in this uh, vermicompost uh, even if the small earthworm also may be there may be present so to make them live uh, so the moisture content around 25 percent should be maintained and also higher moisture content is not required because this is the moisture content convenient for the life of the vermicompost because many microorganisms are there, uh, many growth hormones and uh, many um, many uh, uh, those growth regulators are there uh, are there in the and also the body parts of the earthworms they are pre they are present in the uh, vermic cocoons also uh, may be there so there are all the live things the needs of moisture content around 25 30 percent is favorable for this uh, uh, final vermicompost conventionally uh, after separation earthworms the vermicompost dried in a uh, natural process under the sunlights under cloudy weather particularly during the rainy seasons open house drying becomes uh, as difficult so mechanical drying as discussed in mechanical drying so here it has a screening machines that is a 3 meter in uh, length and 1.5 meter in the width so screening machine is there where the earthworms and the vermicompost they are separated so a drying chamber then consisting of thermostat a blower and baffle play on furnace play that provide the hot airs uh, so which can make the uh, on go uh, one go there is a drying of the compost. So, besides there is a solar dryers, drying systems can be used under the sunny uh, sunny weather. So, after drying the warming compost is bagged immediately by manually or by the mechanical device and the bag should be stored under cool conditions in sets for the transportation and the uh, and use in the uh, field. So, these are the some of the drying courses in the video also uh, next year showing the video how the uh, separations can be done from earthworm from the uh, vermicompost either using the uh, manual uh, sieving or using the uh, mechanical uh, process by the uh, process by the mechanical vibrator and the sieving sieving machines and followed by the drains how it can be uh, dried in the, in the over the by making the dome shaped uh, so that they can be piled together um, and the, uh, the uh, earthworms migrate from the to the bottom layers from the top layer bottom layers and the vermicompost can be separated from the from the top by step by step so this is process will be uh, showing in the in video in in few slides and so uh, now we will discuss about the harvesting of the matured uh, compost uh, so in harvesting means initially you have to separate the earthworms uh, from this compost then they will put the compost for the drying uh, because we will dry so that the moisture content should be maintained around 25 to 30 percent uh, because the earthworm contains uh, many of the live organisms microbes are there so minimum moisture content content 25 percent has to be maintained then we will go for the packaging of this uh, vermicompost uh, so uh, as you see here uh, this is the matured vermicompost and you can see the earthworms are there uh, in this vermicompost so you have some uh, saving technology uh, 
बाय व्हिच यू कैन सेपरेट द अर्थवर्म फ्रॉम द वर्मी कंपोस्ट ऑफ कोर्स यू कैन दी आल्सो अदर अदर मेथड यू कैन मेक ए हीप सो इफ यू मेक ए हीप द अर्थवर्म्स आर डिस्कस दे डोंट लाइक द लाइट कंडीशन दे कैन गो इनसाइड्स सो यू कैन कलेक्ट द अर्थवर्म फ्रॉम द अपर लेयर स्लोली एंड स्लोली एंड दी द लेफ्ट ओवर द वर्मी कंपोस्ट कैन बी स्क्रीन यूजिंग द सीप मेथड्स सो नाउ दे विल बी लोडिंग दिस अर्थवर्म इन द सीप एंड विल पु रन दिस सीप बाय सीविंग मेथड वी कैन सेपरेट द अर्थवर्म from this uh, burning compost so for separation of the earth form from the burning compost uh, we are using the mechanical sieving methods so you can see this is the sieve so by vibrations so uh, we can uh, the earth the burning compost can be collected in one direction so this is the way of the collecting burning compost and the earth forms can be collected in the other directions so now we'll show you we'll load the burning compost and uh, run the machine so you can see uh, how the वर्मी uh, कंपोस्ट एंड अर्थवर्म्स आर सेपरेटेड सो यू आर नाउ यू आर लोडिंग द वर्मी कंपोस्ट ऑन दिस सीप सो बाय दिस वाइब्रेशन यू कैन सी हियर सो हियर वी आर कलेक्टिंग द वर्मी कंपोस्ट दिस इज ए दिस इज ए गुड क्वालिटी फाइन फाइन कंपोस्ट बाय द सीविंग मेथड्स सो हियर यू कैन गेटिंग द the burning compost like a granular granular cell and if you can see here the here you are collecting here collecting the waste materials the larger size particles and also earth forms this earth forms are also and so earth forms you can see this the earth forms are getting collected all right so these are the earth forms so earth forms are collected uh, in one end and the burning compost at the other end so these are the waste material also we can we can again screen the earth forms and the leftover materials can be used for the composting process too so this is the final burning compost you can see so this one will uh, the moisture content is uh, more than 30% so will go for the drying so after drying uh the, when the moisture content comes 25 around 25 to 30% we can go for the packaging of this vermi compost so this can be uh, put for the drying either the hot air dryers or this can be dried also um, by the over the the, the the floors where the, with the sunshine so soft sunshine we can dry this and the moisture content can be decreased to around 25 to 30% so this is the for the drying of the vermi compost so we have here hot air um, dryer so if the hot air is blown to a blown here the vermi compost can be loaded on the top they have the sieve so vermi compost dropped here and we have the hot air blowers with so the hot air the vermi compost can be dried the vermi compost are loaded on the top is a sieve is there and the, from there if a vibration so vermi compost are dropped and with that there is a hot air blowers so with the hot air the vermi compost can be dried and collected at the bottom so after uh, separation of uh, earthworm from the vermi compost we can go for the hot air drying also we can go for the air drying you can keep in the floors or on the plastic sheets we can spread this and we can allow this vermi uh, compost to dry for certain period so this is the final vermi compost as we have collected after the separation of earthworm this can be spread on the plastic sheets or on the uh, cemented floor also so maybe after the air drying when you observe that say moisture contents around 25 to 30% then you can go for packaging of this vermi compost after drying so you can go for the packaging so likewise the vermi compost can be packaged in a perforated gurney bag because this is the lime materials and the microbes are there they do have the respirations so this is the you can look at the final vermi compost after uh, drying still the moisture content can be 
dot around 25 30 percent and it can be packaged with a gunny bag and this should be labeled also. So, uh, so label means uh, the vermicompost the nutrient content has to be specified and the producer also has to specify and amount of specially the major nutrients and the macronutrients, micronutrients and if the vermicompost is prepared for specific crops like your potato or any vegetables or any uh, field grains, rice or wheat that also to be specified on the labels this vermicompost is suitable for this, this type of the crops. Now uh, we can show you a uh, small demo how we can use the vermicompost in vegetable crops. So we will go to the field, uh, how we can prepare the fields, how we can mix the vermicompost in the uh, before planting or the uh, seed or before planting of the seedling materials in the main field. So also now we will be discussing about the applications of the vermicompost or the use of the vermicompost in the uh, crop productions either for vegetables or the cereal crops. So, this we are showing a integrated farming system concepts where we have a pond, in pond we are growing fish, fish culture, we have also uh, the crops, we have the vegetable crops inside the, inside the greenhouse and also we have the crops outside. The uh, concept of this one, so there is a no waste in this in these systems. So output of uh, one pro component is used as a input for the other components. So here we have the fish, so you do use the fresh water uh, in this pond so that fish can grow and also the, the water can be recycled back and this water can be used for growing um, vegetables or growing field crops. Uh, uh, so this is a greenhouse, I, what I feel every farmer should have a small greenhouse because this is used as a rain out shelters or this can be used for the specially growing high value crops if some farmer has to become highly remunerative to have a uh, higher, higher income. So one small greenhouse can give a throughout year vegetables as a off season vegetables or the cash crops, you can uh, grow for the cash crops and can have a better income. So uh, now we are, we are going for the uh, uh, planting of the uh, brinjal seedling. So before planting you have to prepare the uh, soil well and this is a drip period system. So after preparing the soil wells uh, you have to make the particular spacings that means the spacing between the rows and spacing between plants in the same rows. So as per the spacing at particular points, so you have to uh, put the vermicompost and this is this is the ridge and furrow systems as you have made the ridges and this is the furrow area and here the vermicompost are mixed at the point where the plant has to be grown and this should be mixed well in the soil. So in the soil and the vermicompost they should be mixed together. So likewise so the vermicompost and soils they should be well mixed. After the proper mixing of the vermicompost in the soils. So you can uh, go for the, the planting of these seedlings. So there is no need of applying vermicompost throughout the field because the, uh, so this is a localized placement which has a band placement uh, where the, the, the place where the crop has to be grown, only those place we mix the vermicompost and we calculate the vermicompost as per the need of the crops and the well mixing then, then you can go for planting of this and the seedlings or you have any crop you have, you have the either the um, broccoli or you have the capsicums, the seedlings can be planted here and this can be uh, made a slightly rich so that water should not accumulate to the base of the stems, made rich and of course the dripper lines, we are putting the dripper lines here and as per the need the, the drip, dripper systems can provide the water and the water can be also excess water can be drained to the, the furrow area so the crop can be well protected uh, from the excess water conditions. Of course the drip irrigation we are supplying water as per the need of the crops. So this is how when you go for the vermicompost applications the field should prepared as per the need of the crops we can apply vermicompost and using vermicompost we can grow um, vegetable crops without any requirement of chemical fertilizers and by the full amount of vermicompost uh, applications we can get the same yield as of the chemical fertilizers. We can show you some of the crops we have grown like a cauliflowers in this summer seasons like June, July we are able to have cauliflower productions using only vermicompost you can see the growth of the crops. So this is the cauliflower we are able to grow uh, inside this greenhouse and using uh, only vermicompost in the month of because it was uh, planted in month of May and now the crop has come to the uh, fruiting stage. So by having this uh, uh, as a high value crops uh, having this greenhouse, so you can grow so high value crops throughout the year and this can give you a better remuneration, the, the better profit to the farmers of a small farmer or marginal farmers. They can have such type of the uh, 
vegetable crops inside greenhouse and using only comp vermicompost we can, we can have sell as a organic products uh, as this has the high nutritional value as compared to the chemical uh, farming the products from the chemical fertilizer. So, it is free from pesticides or insecticides and so it contains a higher amounts of this secondary uh, uh, metabolites. So, you know the uh, like cauliflower this has a higher glucose con con contents antioxidants that is good for the health of the crop. So, having the uh, uh, greenhouse and doing the organic way by using vermicompost, the farmer can make the more remuneration, more profit, can be self sustainable. It can meet his uh, own family requirement at the same time, he can sell the produce and can have a better income for his own, uh, own living. Okay, thank you very much.